Hi everyone, Patty here, working on a master board that can be used for so many projects, journal pages, cards, postcards, artist trading cards and coins, tags for journals, stamps, buttons, the list goes on and on with this versatile piece. Master boards are a collage of material, either painted or collaged with using ephemera. I like using a heavy duty paper of 140 to 180 pound paper. Decide how your layout or composition of your master board is going to be. Cross or a T shape, dots and patterns all over, or a horizontal landscaping where it's all going one direction. You've got your supplies and you're all started, ready to start by putting into a few piles by colors, textures, and size. I love using napkins or tissue paper. For a napkin, you can just take a piece of masking tape and pull off the back piece. There are two pieces usually, and so you need to pull off both of those pieces. We've got our pieces separated. I'm going by colors and textures and ripping some of them instead of cutting them, because I like how those glue down a little bit more. I use a matte medium for gluing everything down into a pattern or a composition that we already talked about in your T or your pattern, which is going to be all over the page or your horizontal or landscaping. You're going to rotate your page and you're going to glue pieces down in different directions. On this piece, I find myself looking at it as separate pieces that would have a little something in a postcard size or an ATC, an artist trading card, making sure you have every part of the heavy paper covered. I use one piece in three different locations on my page. Then I'm going back and forth, working throughout the whole page of my collage. When I'm watching some videos, I feel I could watch paint dry all day. Well, here you get to see me gluing pieces randomly all over my page and watch glue dry. I keep scraps of everything to use on my collages. It may be the color or the texture of a piece that pulls it all together. I love to do doodle art and the bird, roses, and circles are all my own hand-drawn doodles that I've copied and ripped up to use in my collage. And I'm wanting these birds to be kind of the focal points on uh, my three postcards. And so I'm using the birds from the napkin, my doodle bird that I've drawn, and I just keep adding layers. And I try to make sure that the birds are separated enough that you're going to be able to make a postcard of a four by six postcard in each one of those areas. But just keep adding your layers, keep going over the top of each piece with your matte medium, your decoupage glue, whatever you're deciding to use. As I've said before, the matte medium is what I like the best. the words um, journal because pieces of these that artist trading cards and coins may be put in journals just all depends on what you're going to use your master board for dry and as I glue these pieces and parts onto my collage. At this point it's looking pretty good. I just want to add a few more of the darker color, the orange with the black diamonds.
Now I'm going to go over and get a little more artsy feel or a grungy, grungy vintage look. I use a scraper that I've got from the dollar store with a heavy body gesso. If you get too much, use a baby wipe to wipe some of it back. Just kind of go over some of the areas. I like to make a watered down burnt umber wash and put it over the top, just giving this a more vintage look as I go. Wipe a bit, some of it back with a baby wipe if you get a little too much. It's all about adding layers and depth in these master board. Stencils are great for adding depth and adding layers to your collage. These up at the local craft store. I'm trying to decide where I will cut my postcards from, make my buttons, my ATCs, getting the focal point into each piece, or at least trying to. Making a master board of words is a good idea. I take some words and glue those onto a dictionary page for some of my extra words to put on my pieces. Add the words, tickets, original stamps to make a focal point to your picture pieces. Stamps are a great up the little pieces. I just cut the little pieces and then I glue those onto scrap pieces of paper and then I go around the edges and trim them up with pinking shears and leaving just an eighth of an inch to a little less around each piece. I really like how those stamps turned out. They are fun in using different projects. Buttons are another way to use up the little scraps. I cut circles in different sizes and then I find a button that's about that size and I use my stylus to make some spots where I know the holes need to be punched and I use this little tiny hole punch. So here I've got a picture where I've shown you that I have used my buttons in my journal. They look like they've been hand sewn into the page. Each one of the buttons I've gone around with a Tim Holtz Distress Ink, just giving them each a little vintage look. Same with my artist trading cards. I go around each one of those with the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. Here's the postcards and postcards. Well, all of these pieces, after I've cut them, I go around them with a fingernail file. This is an em emery board. It's a heavyweight one. I go around each of the edges and I'm, you get the little extras that come off of it. It's just a great way to add a little more texture to those edges. You can see if you've got everything adhered well. And then when you go over that with your Distress Ink, it causes light and dark areas and makes it even look a little more vintage. I've got my charcoal pencil and I'm going to go around my words. This adds, makes them stand out just a little bit more. And then I just keep going over it and then I rub it with my finger. And then that sometimes makes it look a little too dark on the words. So then I take my eraser and I just erase over the top of where the words are so that you can still see the words clearly. Now here I've noticed that one of the artist trading coins has got a little edge coming up, so I'm re-gluing it down and making sure that the edge is down after I've burnished the edges with my emery board. Painting a master board is easy as well. Picked four to six colors that I plan to stick with for this journal. 
piece. I love the Lumineer paints and the color shift paints and anything metal metallic or shiny. I use a sandwiching method here where I add a few drops all over the page. Then I use a spray bottle and water with a spray bottle with water in it and lightly spray the dots on the paint. Or you can make your own shimmer spray with the pearlescent paints, the Luminaire pearlescent paints and water and put in a spray bottle. I sandwich another piece of heavyweight paper on top of this and move the paint around by swiping an old gift card onto the back side of the page. Make sure your table is covered because paint can squeeze out and get out all over your workspace. When I lift up the sandwich piece, I keep swiping the piece around to get paint splotches throughout my page. Keeping, make sure you dry between layers. Keep adding color in spots to add your layers. Here are a few cards I've made with my painted master boards. So this is a bit addictive. As you can see, I have every scrap painted. I finish some off with dots, circles from toilet paper roll ends, dipped in paint, gift card scraps, stippled, paint brushes, or just splatter dots. This is the fun part. Then I put the pieces through my Big Shot and add a texture by embossing your pieces. And some of the pieces I've used the Tim Holtz um, die cuts and cut some holes into them. I've also added dots and dashes with gel pins and Sharpies. Hope I've given you some good ideas for making and using your master board. Enjoy.